let's get into the word. We're wrapping up our series on to know him. It's very important that we know God because we can find ourselves just knowing about God. We can know about church, but we don't know him personally. So let's look at this in Philippians 3.10. Go there in your Bible. Help the people next to you. Philippians 3.10. Philippians 3.10. Help people next to you if they don't have it yet. I want you to put your eyes on it. If you have your own Bible, hopefully this verse is highlighted in your Bible. We want to know him. We want to know him. Philippians 3.10, look what it says. You can follow along on the screen or in your Bible. It says this, that I may know him, Paul's talking, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, that I may know him. Who remembers what that word know actually means? Michael? Personal experience, Liam? Personal experience? No, you said it already. Ellis? Well, that's how I know him, right? But to know means, like, this is personal. Say, this is personal. You know, people that take what other people do personal, it's because they're not personal with him. Do you understand? Because when you're personal with him, you realize that if God is for me, nothing can stand against me. Every tongue that rises up in judgment will be proven wrong. When you know him, then you know how he operates. But on the other side of that, you know what the enemy comes to do. Who can get to John 10, 10? The fastest. John 10, 10. I know what you I know you know what it says, but get there, get there, get there, get there in your Bible. Who is already there? Uriah, you're in John 10 10? Good job. John 10 10. Oh, you were in the word verse. I need John 10 10. Who got it first? Ellis got it first before Liam? He's behind y'all. Who got it first? Who? For real? Can I Craig, will you give him a mic? Ellis, please read it. You can come up here. They're going to put the camera on you instead of on me. Whichever one. All right, Ellis Reed, y'all follow along. The thief. So does you have not, to go. Yeah, there we go. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and they have it more abundantly. Okay, so what's the difference here? Jesus came to give me life and life more abundantly. And what does the thief or the enemy come to do? Still kill, kill and destroy. See, whenever I know God, thank you so much. Ellis, can you give him something, I don't know, like a lozenge or something? Just kidding. <laughs> I think you screamed your voice away today, this morning, which is fine. It's awesome. We're going to give you some candy, and that will just, you know, it'll help it. In Jesus' name. It's important. If I know God, then I know what comes from God. The Bible also says every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father. So God is good. The devil is bad. But if I don't know God, then I can begin to blame him for bad things. How many of y'all have ever heard somebody say, well, it was God's will that they die has anyone ever heard that? Or God is in control and so we don't have anything to do with who gets sick and who gets healed. Have you ever heard those things? Yes. Well, what is that a result of? People don't know God. See, when I know God, then I know, just like I know Ellis. So do you know one thing that I know about Ellis? Ellis is a boy, a, boy, a man. Wow, calm down, calm down. Ellis is, Ellis is like, thank you. Thank you. It's a scrappy boy. Ellis is a boy. Now, the only reason why I know that is because he's told me, right? And I believe him. His mom said it. Ellis is a boy. I know that about him, right? So I'm not going to accuse him of being a girl. Do you know why? Do you know? I know Ellis. And I know that Ellis is a boy. Just like Ryder. Ryder has brown hair. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, say Ryder, you have red hair. You have red hair. You have red hair. You have red hair. No, I know Ryder. And so I know even if, even if Ryder's not in the room and someone comes and asks me, Hey, does Ryder have red hair? I'm going to say, no, Ryder has brown hair. 
I'm going to know. Why? Because I know him. See, because I know Ryder, I know what he looks like. I know also that he's a boy. But see, if I don't know God, then I can begin to put things on him that aren't on him. Just like there's probably somebody across the world whose name is Christopher. And they live in Hawaii, in Mexico. Okay, thank you, Kennedy. Uh, Christopher in Mexico, and he has blonde hair, brown eyes. His dad's name is Carson. His mom's name is Jennifer. Yeah, guys, we're in Mexico here, so we're already way far off. Carson, Linda, look at Linda. Okay, but like, that's probably not true. You know why? I don't know. See, I don't have to guess with God. Say, I don't have to guess with God. I can actually know him, and I know him personally. It's not enough that your parents know God. It's not enough that I know God, right? I'm going to study. I'm going to bring the word for you, but you have to know God for you. Look to your neighbor and say, know him for you. Well, how do I do that? How do I know God for me? Number one, me Read. read. I've got to read the word. I get to know God through his word. Do I get to know God by going out into the forest and looking at the trees and smelling the sap? The tree sap. No, that's not how you get to know God, right? Do I get to know God by sitting Indian style and hum? No, that's not how you get to know God. That's demonic. I get to know God by me. Reading. Me reading the word. Or if you're too little right now and you're like, I can't read, then what happens? You have somebody else read it for you. Or you turn on um, a thing on your YouTube of the Bible, right? You can watch Superbook and get the Bible. Gospel Bill, get the Bible. I recently heard, and I know I've told some of y'all that story where the, the little boy was in the car, he got kidnapped, but it actually... Do- Um, Willie George said it this way, and so obviously it had been passed down, and I got it a little wrong. But the accurate story was Gospel Bill, Willie George, made a Gospel Bill talking about the name of Jesus. He was just saying how important it is that kids hear the word. Because whenever you hear the word or read the word, then what will begin to come out of your mouth? The word. So you get to know God, and then you become confident, and you actually stand on his word. You walk by faith. So this little girl had gotten in Oklahoma. It happened in Oklahoma. This little girl got kidnapped. Like, literally, a man came to the door. She opened the door. He grabbed her. The mom was on the phone in the kitchen, so she didn't even realize it. So they're, like, driving, and at first she's like, what is going on? She didn't realize what was happening. And so then when she realized, like, this is bad, we've been gone from my mom for a long time, she said, Father God, I thank you that you're going to get me home in the name of Jesus. And that man said, I don't like you saying that. And so she kept saying the name of Jesus. She had just watched a gospel bill where they used the name of Jesus. Nicodemus had used the name of Jesus to help. And so she watched that. So she got to know who God was. Well, if God is going to save Nicodemus by the name of Jesus, then guess what she thought? Then God's going to save me by the name of Jesus. And so he literally pulled over. It had already been like an hour, pulled over, dropped her off. They had already, you know, the mom realized she's gone. So the police had already been looking for her and they found her and she was completely saved. But see, if I don't get to know God personally, either by reading the word, filling my heart and mind with the word of God, then what happens when things go on? I'm not prepared. I freak out. I go to the world's way of doing things instead of trusting in the word. Say, I got to know God. See, because whenever you know God, there's freedom. The Bible says you will know the truth. You will know it. Say, know it. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Does it say you will come to church and you'll be set free? No, you got to know the truth. We come to church and that's a big deal. The Bible says, do not forsake the fellowshipping of believers, of yourselves with other believers, right? We come to church to hear the word, but I've got to know it for me. So how do I know? Me, me read the word, right? Me hear the word, me watch the word. And as I do that, it gets down in my heart. And then the second part is what? The Holy Spirit, he reveals it to me. He teaches it to me. The Holy Spirit is my teacher. So I'm reading a verse and it's like, what? What does this mean? The Holy Spirit says, well, this is what it means. 
today this is what it means for you, Luke. Today this is what it means for you, Michael. He, he tells me personally what that word means for me. So then I know God. Then I'm going throughout the day because I know God when a friend comes up and they're mean to me. They're talking mess, they're saying stuff, or when a teacher starts being rude and accusing me of stuff or whatever, I know God. So I know what is the enemy trying to do in my life. What is he trying to do by using all those people to be mean to me? Make me feel sad. Make me feel sad. What'd you say? Ruin my life, right? I know what the enemy's trying to do. I don't think, oh, God's trying to teach me a lesson today. No, I know God. He already taught me who he was in his word, and that's what I'm walking in, and the Holy Spirit's helping me, so I know that's the enemy. So I take authority over him. Say, I got to know God. Y'all, if you don't know God, then you don't know the enemy. Do you understand? If you don't know God, you won't know the enemy. You'll get things confused. And there's a lot of believers that are confused. Well, God did that. No, God didn't do that. I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and they're like, well, God allowed that to happen. Well, God's given us a free will. God's hands are tied. It's not a matter of allowing. It's a matter of us not using our authority. You have to know God. Otherwise, you see him as this big, bad wolf, and he's not a big, bad wolf. He's a good, good father. That's who he is. That's who he is. And that's the song, right? Good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Y'all remember that song? Go in your Bibles to Philippians 2.12. You're already in Philippians. Go to 2.12. Just back one chapter. Oh, yeah. Some of you went to John 10.10. Good job. So I know God. Now what do I do? My beloved, as you have always obeyed. Say that. Say, I always obey. Say, I always obey right away. Amen. Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Look what Paul told us to do. Now that I know God, deep kids, remember what we talked about? Now that I know God, what do I have to do? What does the scripture say? Philippians 2.12, what does it say? It doesn't say do it. I need you to read it because I want the deep kids. In my absence, what? Read the scripture. So what did I teach in deep? What do we got to do? Y'all don't remember? Work it out. Work it out. Right, we got to work it out. Thank you. It's like four years. Like it's only been a few nights sleep, guys. Come on. Get it together. Slap yourself in the face very tenderly. Okay, yeah, wake up. I've got to work it out, right? So here's what, it, here's what it is. I know God, and how do I get to know God? Me? Read. read. And then I allow the Holy Spirit to? Reveal. Reveal it or teach it to me. So me read, Holy Spirit teach. Okay, let's say it all together. Me read, me read. Holy, Spirit teach. Holy Spirit teach. Say me read. Me read. Holy Spirit teach. Holy Spirit teach. That's how I get to know God. I don't get to know God through experiences. Well, this hard time is really teaching me about God. No, 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 no. I get to know about God, how? By his word and by the Holy Spirit. That's it. Say, that's it. it. Say, no mas. mas. Those are the things, just like macaroni and cheese. It's got a recipe. If I want it to taste like the manufacturer or the producer, whatever, designed for it to taste, then what do I need to follow? Follow the dang instructions. Follow the recipe. I can't keep adding to it, making up my own path. Oh, well, I'm going to get to know God this way. You know, people are like, well, I'm gonna, I, I can know God outside of the church. No, you can't because you can't know God outside of his order, outside of his word. So one more time, new crew. How do I get to know God? Number one. And number two, the Holy Spirit teach. Newbies, how do I get to know God? Number one. And number two, the Holy, Spirit. the Holy Spirit teaches it to me. That's it. Look at your neighbor and say, that's it. That's, that's, it. It. that's how you do it. But then, just like we read in Philippians 2.12, I got to work it out. I've got to work it out. I don't just sit around and say, all right, this is what I've read. This is what the Holy Spirit told me to do. You actually have to what? Work it out. You've got to work it out. You've got to actually do it. So what did God tell me to do? Now that I know it's time to go. Hello, Mark 16, 15. Go there. 
Now that I know, it's time to go. Mark 16, 15. Everybody get there. I want you to put your eyes on. If you have your own Bible, I want you to highlight this verse. Because now that you know, this is what you're supposed to do. Say, now that I know, it's time to go. Personally, you work out the word for you. You go into your day and you work out the word, right? By obeying your parents, by being good at school, doing what you're supposed to do, honoring the rules, being respectful, not gossiping, not being out of order, right? How do you go? Uriah, what's one way you work out the word in your own life every day? What's one way you do it? Personally, what do you do? How do you work out the word in your life every day? Reading the Bible, right? So that's how I work it out. Zariah, what about you? You what? Pray before you start your day. That's working it out, right? Because it's not enough just to know. Do you know who knows a lot about God? Jesus, Jesus but who else? Yeah. The devil. So I don't want to be in the knowing group. Okay, I'm not on just the knowing team. Oh, I know God. I know God. Okay, well, so does the devil. But what's the difference between me and the devil today? Huh? I have power, but who cares? He has power. What's the difference between me and the devil today? I do the word. Ding, 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 ding. Ellis is the winner. Slime's going to fall down on your head. Just kidding. That would be awesome if slime fell down on everyone else's head if they got their wrong. It's not slime, guys. It's intellectual. Okay. But listen, I do the word. What's the difference between me and the devil today? I do the word. If I go through my day and I'm not doing the word, uh, who am I looking like? I'm looking like the devil. I want to do the word. So Zariah said pray. Uriah said read the word. Liam, how do you work out... You knowing him. Yielding to him in the beginning of the day. That's how I work it out, right? I say, God, I'm yours to command. Michael, how do you work it out during your day? Yeah. Yeah. Right, you can't be doing that. Yeah, you got to be all in that. So good. What else? I think we're missing like practical things. How do I work out the word every single day? Let's say someone comes up to you and says, oh my gosh, did you hear what happened with so-and-so at school? When someone comes up to me, how do I work out knowing him? Because listen, what do I do? What, what is one amazing thing I can do? Ariah, what can I do? To know him. Yes, I got to know him. So what can I do? Yes, that's so good. Stop gossiping. Stop. Mm, really? Stop. Blah, 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 blah. That's what it causes. Stop gossiping about them. That's talking behind their back. When someone says, hey, did you hear? And if you hadn't heard, then guess what you should say? No, and I don't want to hear. Right? Because what? What is that? I don't want to just be, oh, well, I'm telling you this so you can pray for them. Yeah. Baloney. That's not why. I don't want to be on the same side as the enemy. I know God. I know God, but then I don't do it. Say, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. So as believers, when we know God, it's our job to do the word. So Jesus was very clear. Now that you know me, it's time to go. Everyone say, it's time to go. Mark 16, 15, let's read this. And then I'm going to pray over y'all that you'll be bold to go. He said unto them, what? What does it say? Mark 16, 15. Do y'all have your Bibles? Okay, what does it say? He said unto them, go into all the world and what? Preach the gospel to every creature. Once I know, it's time to go. Y'all, we have to share this with other people. Look what the Bible says really quick. They'll put it up. You don't have to go there. In Romans 10, 14, look what it says. Look what it says. 
How then, if you're talking, you're not right. And I love you, but team leaders, y'all got to be all up in the mix. Do you understand? Like all up in the mix? Because I've got girls that are talking. Do you understand? So we got to watch them because I don't want to call them out because I'll just get ticked because they're distracting me. I know they're distracting the people next to them. They're not answering any of the questions. Romans 10, 14, look what it says. How then shall they call on him in whom they have believed? How shall they believe if they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Now put back up Mark, 6, Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, go into the world and what? Go into the world and what? And preach. Once I know it's time to go, go. We are all preachers or ministers of the gospel. Once I know God, it's time for me to share that with others. Y'all, do you know that there's people that you'll even come in contact with this afternoon? Maybe you go out to eat or you're outside playing. Maybe you're going to a park today. Maybe you're going to a family member's house. There's people that you're going to see that guess what? They don't know God. And it's up to me. It's up to you. Because I know it's time for me to go. Go into your world and preach the gospel. People need to know the truth. Well, how are they going to know the truth? If you, preach it to them. if you preach it to them. You've got to be willing to share it with them. Because if you don't share it with them, then they're not going to know. And this is what we're called. Now that I know. Say, now that I know. Now that I know. It's time to go. You know, if you got some exciting news about a vacation that you are going to take or maybe something that you got, I know some of you have shared like what you got for Christmas, you found out something or what you're going to get, you found out you know something and it's super exciting news, what would be the first thing you would want to do? But you found out you're going on an amazing trip, what's the first thing that you want to do? Tell everyone. I want to talk about it, right? I'm going to talk about the vacation. I'm going to talk about the toy I'm going to get, right? Because now that you know, what? You just want to share with everyone. How many of you have ever shared some really exciting news with people? Anybody ever done that? Like you were excited about something and you went and shared it. Well, don't you know that this is exciting that people don't have to go to hell? People don't have to spend forever in hell. And then people can have heaven on earth. That's good to know. Say, once I know, it's time to go. But here's the thing. If you don't spend time knowing God, then you won't ever say, I won't ever. I won't ever really know him. And then I won't be able to really share him. The Bible says in Proverbs, you can go there really quick. Proverbs 28.1. It says this, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold. The righteous are bold. I want to pray over you today for boldness. Maybe you're like, well, I know God, but I haven't really been going. I haven't been going and sharing him with others. Then I want to pray over you today for boldness. I want you to be bold to go. Say bold to go. Bold to go. So if that's you, I want you to stand up right where you are. If you're like, you know, I've been knowing God, but I haven't been bold to go. I've been shy. I want you to stand up right where you are because I'm going to pray over you. If you haven't been bold to go, you've been kind of timid or afraid to stand up for the truth. If that's you, you know it's you, you just stand up. You receive what you need to receive today. This isn't about anybody else. This is about you. And you have nothing to be embarrassed about. This is a new start, a fresh day. So I want you to lift your hands to heaven. Because here's the thing. When you know God, it's time to go. And so you have to decide. I don't care who it is he tells me to go to, who he asks me to talk to, how he tells me to stand up, even if it's someone I've been friends with forever. If he's telling me to be bold, I'm going to be bold from this day on. Bold for the truth. So lift your hands to heaven. I'm going to pray over you. Everyone else, you could just sit quietly, bow your heads and close your eyes. But if you're standing up, I want you to lift your hands to heaven because you're going to receive an impartation of supernatural boldness. Father God, we come before you right now. And I thank you for each person that's standing up, every boy and every girl that's standing up and saying, I haven't been as bold as I need to be. Father God, I thank you that as they get to know you more and more every day, I thank you that they are just like this verse says, they are bold as a lion. 
They don't back down. They don't waver. They're not afraid. They do not have the fear of man. I thank you, Father God, that they are free from fear right now in the name of Jesus. They're not concerned about what other people think about them, what other people say about them. They're focused on you and hearing your voice and doing what Jesus told them to do, which is to go into their world. Father God, I even thank you that they are bold to stand up for the truth in their personal life. When no one's around, they will be bold to stand up for the truth. They won't allow compromise. They won't allow carnality, sin, laziness, or selfishness, but they will be bold personally, and then they will be bold publicly. I thank you for it, God, right now, a supernatural impartation of boldness. Now just close your eyes. If you're standing up, lift your hands and say, thank you, God, that I'm bold. Say, thank you, Father, for boldness. Say, I will go where you tell me to go. I will do what you tell me to do. And I will say what you tell me to say. Because I know you, God, I will go and be bold. In Jesus' name.